Welcome folks. Those who have been around the channel for a while will recognize this as my seven and a half inch gauge locomotive that adults and children can ride behind. It is a gas mechanical locomotive. I've had it running for about a year and a half and now that I have it going reliably I am tired of the noise and vibration from the gas engine, an older Harbor Freight model. So now that it's reliable, I am going to convert it over to battery electric. Well, before that work begins this winter, I did want to show it in its current state and how the gas mechanical system works, as it has been pretty reliable and it may help someone else starting out into the hobby. Long story short, when I received this engine, it was a frame with a pile of sheet metal forming the body. It did not have any wheels, axles, bearings for the axles. Basically, it was just the motor, a forward and reverse gearbox, and the shell and pieces. And I had to put it all together. I did so without using a lathe. I bought the wheels, 5-inch wheels, off of Roll Models, Inc. out of California. They were a little bit too wide to fit in the frame, so I had to use a lathe to thin them up a little bit, still within the IBLS standards or International Brotherhood of Live Steamers. And it runs great. I haven't had it derailed, but the point of that statement is, is that I do not have a lathe or milling equipment. I do have access to a welder and torches, as you see there, but I do not have machine equipment. So just with a file a hacksaw and some very basic tools, I was able to put this locomotive together. Now, if I was sitting on a riding car behind a locomotive operating it, there are a handful of controls back here. There are a set of three switches there in the center, one being the ignition, the other one the light, and the third one not being used, just filling the blank hole. To the left of that, there is the throttle for the engine, handbrake, and down at the bottom, simply forward and reverse. That's all there is to it. This engine does not have a clutch, simply when you throttle up, the centrifugal go-kart type clutch engages and you start moving. The tricky bit with that is you have to be very touchy uh, with the throttle here, just the slightest movements and you'll start moving and, and if you're not careful, you can spin the wheels quite easily, especially if you're on slippery track. As I mentioned, there is the engine inside there. It's an older Harbor Freight model when they still went by Central Machine. Six and a half horsepower, which is way more horsepower than you can ever put down to the track. If we take a peek inside there, there it is. And you can see that go-kart type uh, centrifugal clutch there on the output shaft of the motor with some nerdy number 35 chain to a sprocket. I'll open up the hatches here so you can see inside. Before I do so, notice this engine is about 25 pounds or so, 25 to 30. It's hanging off the back end of the engine. Look at where my axle centers are at. The front axle is over here, the rear axle is back here. So that engine is hanging out behind the rear axle. So in order to counterweight that, Quite literally, the easiest way I found to do so was to run to Walmart and buy a kettlebell. So in the front, there's a 25-pound kettlebell holding down the front of the locomotive to try to balance the weight. And in fact, this locomotive tracked incredibly well. It does not fall off the rails. I'll open up the panels from the other side and we'll get a glimpse in from that angle. Okay, here's a look inside the locomotive with the side panels open. You'll notice this aluminum material along all the inside of the panels. That product is called Killmat. On the back side of that aluminum, there is a tar-based material, and it's supposed to dampen vibrations and eliminate noise. Now, that material did make a very significant difference in making this locomotive quieter. And in fact, for a little single-cylinder gas mechanical locomotive, it's not too bad, but when you go to a rail club and there's folks there with uh, steam engines that they've poured countless hours and a lot of financial resources into, it does kind of suck to have one of these gas mechanicals sounding like a lawnmower no matter what you do riding around the place, especially at night. The steam engines sure sound awesome climbing a grade at night 
And uh, hopefully I can eliminate having a lawnmower running around and masking their uh, very nice stack talk and sounds. Now if we look inside, there again is that go-kart clutch in the back coming to a jack shaft over to that forward reverse transmission, the output of that transmission, sprocket on the far side, runs a chain down to the front axle. Take a look at this transmission here for a moment. You see the shape of it there? When you select forward or reverse, the sprocket changes, there's reverse. Take it over into forward, now I have oil on my hands, very nice. Grease fitting, input shaft, output shaft. Now let's take a look at the handle that operates that. See the shape and design of that handle with the little arrow on it? Remember those because I'm going to show you evidence that this transmission is actually the forward and reverse gearbox of, off of a Maytag ringer washer from the 1930s. Let me show you evidence of that. Okay, we moved out to the barn. I told you that forward and reverse gearbox was off of a Maytag ringer washer from the 1930s. Well, I happen to have a Maytag ringer washer from the mid-1930s. This has actually been in my family for, uh, well, ever since it was new, actually. And if we look over on the right-hand side, notice that shape. Notice that handle is the same as the forward and reverse handle on the locomotive. That forward and reverse gearbox is the exact same uh, gearbox off of a Maytag washer. These ringers, if you didn't know, in the center is neutral. The ringers are not turning. Depending on which way you angle that knob is uh, which way the clothes would feed through that ringer. So there's your forward, neutral, and reverse. Same as what's on that gearbox in a locomotive. Now why is this a problem? Obviously that gearbox held up, but I am concerned because the gas engine that was on these Maytag washers is only rated at 0.65 horsepower, 5 eighths of a horsepower. Meanwhile, that gas engine in that locomotive is 6.5 horsepower. So I am worried uh, about the longevity of that gearbox if I kept it a gas mechanical, if that gearbox would just uh, decide to grenade and give up on the locomotive. Okay, so we've moved back into the much warmer garage. So what is the goal here? Well, as I said, we are going to be converting it to a battery electric locomotive. I have space for two large 100 amp hour scooter batteries totaling 200 amp hours, which I believe should be plenty of power to run this locomotive through an average running day, plus run a sound system or an air, and or an air compressor for air brakes. I've already compiled a lot of the parts for it, one of those being a uh, 24 volt motor this happens to be 450 watts and i will have one of these motors on each axle given that there are two axles totaling 900 watts one of the big advantages here this is a gear reduction motor you can see where the center of the motor is there's a small gear there and a large gear under this cover so what that means is this sprocket's turning about 420 rpm at full output speed and if I try to remember my calculations correctly I believe for a five inch diameter wheel somewhere around 366 rpm is five miles an hour which is plenty fast enough for something that doesn't have trucks this will bob down the track pretty good you really don't need to go much faster than that especially when the uh, the point is going for the ride not necessarily speed of getting to the destination so it won't take a whole lot of sprocket and gear reduction there. Now, if you were just ran a straight motor, not a gear motor, some of those motor output shafts are 2,500 RPM. You have to have a lot of chains and sprockets and jack shafts, which creates a lot of noise. This gear motor is pretty darn quiet. So the shell here is uh, not exactly prototypical. None of the locomotive really is. Of course, it's labeled a Davenport from the Davenport Locomotive Works in Iowa. I will keep it a Davenport locomotive. I enjoy something unique. There are a lot of locomotives on the club tracks that are the same model as one another, so it'll be nice to have something different. Although I do hope to build a new body for it at some point. And I managed to get 
an O-scale narrow gauge model of a Davenport locomotive. O-scale narrow gauge meaning this is an ON30 locomotive, so it operates on HO scale track. I bought this so I have something to take some measurements off of so I can uh, scale that body into my seven and a half inch gauge locomotive, which comes out at two and a half inches to the foot to the prototype. Well, that should do it for this installment. Uh, as I said, I already have a lot of parts for it. Once the uh, motors are mounted, it really won't take a great deal of time to do the electrical work. I am currently working on some drawings for the body so I can lay everything out inside of it once. If I do get to that point of building a new shell, I shouldn't have to move any of the components. To get an idea of the noise, here it is running at idle. You can probably tell I'm kind of yelling over the darn thing. And believe it or not, it's actually uh, quieter than some other gas mechanical engines. But we are inside of the garage, so it probably seems a lot louder in here than it would outside. Regardless, this is just that idle. And uh, as you turn the throttle up, it only gets worse from here. You can nudge it a little bit. That one rattle kind of goes away, but the engine still gets louder. And you can see there the amount of vibration. This brake handle here is just flapping in the wind there. So that's my reason for going electric.